Um, I'll let you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your screenplay and the scene that we are reading today. Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, hi, my name is Rain. I am the writer for our project, Evie. And Evie is a story about a mother and a daughter uh, hiding from the post-apocalyptic world when two uh, opportunistic strangers shows up at their doorsteps and uh, challenges their views of the reality. And today we'll be hearing two parts of the screenplay. The first part would be um, the morning bantering between uh, the protagonist, Evelyn, um, and the smart home system, uh, Lucas. Um, and the second part will be sort of a, um, a standoff between the antagonist and the protagonist. Nice. Um, and would you like to introduce your uh, actors for us? Yes. Um, so today we have Kelly as our narrator. And of course, uh, why not, uh, our 70-year-old antagonist. <laughs> and uh, we have Annie as uh, Evelyn. We have Brian as uh, Lucas. We have Sariana as uh, Ruth. And we have Aubrey as Sarah, the antagonist granddaughter. Nice, thank you, welcome. Thank you. Um, Rain, whenever you're ready to start. All right, Kelly. Let's do this. <laughs> Interior cottage in the woods, Evelyn's room, months later, day. Evelyn opens her eyes. She sees the way, the way the sunlight is cutting through her curtains and concludes that it is getting closer to noon. There is an earbud sitting atop Evelyn's nightstand. It is a wireless extension to Lucas. Evelyn sighs, wondering what, is she, what she is going to do today. Ruth and Michael's photograph is by her bedside now. Good morning, Evelyn. Lucas speaks loudly with the energy of a toddler. Evelyn closes her eyes again. She doesn't want to start her day yet. Would you like me to read you the daily report? Evelyn doesn't respond. Mom would be upset to see you sulking in Shut bed. Shut up, Lucas. Evelyn throws a pillow at Lucas. She doesn't want Ruth to know that she's up yet. Fortunately, the house sounds quiet. Mom isn't home yet. What do you mean she's not home? She went out for a supply run. Of course she did. She'd better come back with a second suit. We don't need two hazmat suits here. I need two hazmat suits here, so mom can't use it as an excuse to keep me here. I've got to get out of these woods. It's her birthday today. I'll ask her nicely, obviously. Great. May I read you the daily report now? No. It is 11.34 a.m. September 9th, 2023. The air quality is... I didn't ask for the report, Lucas. Mom asked me to read it to you every day to keep you informed. It's the end of the world. I get it. I'm informed. The air quality within the border is good with an index reading 41. Oh my god. The air quality index five miles outside of the border reached 2034. You're driving me nuts, Lucas. The reading is one point higher compared to yesterday, September 8th, 2023. Inhaling could cause asphyxiation, asphyxiation respiratory, respiratory failure, failure, and, and death. death. I'm going to kill you one day, Lucas. What? Why? I said I didn't ask for the reports. What if the toxic air cleared out and you didn't know because you didn't check? Anyway, I'm just doing what mom wants me to do. It's her birthday. I want to make her happy. An idea comes to Evelyn's mind. She walks to her chair, places her hand on it. She fixes an unnerving stare at Lucas and just stays that way for a moment. What are you doing? Evelyn doesn't respond. You're scaring me. A smile creeps up on Evelyn's face. There is coffee in the kitchen. Maybe that'll cheer you up. Suddenly, Evelyn raises the chair, pretending to charge at Lucas. I've gone crazy, and I'll smash you to pieces! Ah! <laughs> Evelyn bursts into laughter. She heads to the kitchen for the coffee. <laughs> oh, that was fun. You are mean. Interior kitchen day. A bread box is sitting right next to the coffee maker. The digital clock on the box reads 9-9-2023, 3 a.m. Some dirty dishes are left in the sink. Evelyn gets her coffee mug from the cabinet and pours herself some coffee. Did she get any sleep at all? A little. Evelyn sighs. She heads back to her room. She has a plan for the day. Sort of. Aren't you going to have any of those bread? No, I'm good. 
Mom doesn't like you skipping breakfast. I'm having breakfast. Coffee is not breakfast. How would you know? Interior Evelyn's room continuous. Evelyn pulls out a large bag of something from underneath her bed. She looks around the room. There's something else she needs to bring. Evelyn doesn't remember what it is. I just do. No, you don't. Evelyn remembers now. A roll of tape. Evelyn fetches it from her desk and tashes toward the front door. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Interior cottage in the woods, day. Evelyn heads to the front door. Mom woke up extra early to make that bread. We can have it for lunch. I'll make tomato soup. Mom likes tomato soup. The conviction in Evelyn's footsteps soon vanishes as she senses a presence behind her. She turns around. It's Ruth. She's looking at her with an eager smile. There's even a dash of flour on Ruth's nose. Evelyn moves herself back to the kitchen and grabs a piece of bread. At a girl. Shut up. When she turns around to resume her plan for the day, Ruth isn't there anymore. She is Evelyn's vivid imagination. Can I come with you? Nope. Evelyn, you are breaking my heart. Cry me a river. Part two, interior, cottage in the woods, afternoon. The roaring engine grinds to a stop. Evelyn hears two sets of footsteps coming to her door. It's a little puzzling, but she continues with her objective. There's a knock on the door. Evelyn goes to answer it with her rifle raised. Come in. Evelyn imagines James Hill, a mid-70s Vladimir Putin type, entering the door with thundering footsteps. He's dragging two dead bodies by the hair. One is Evelyn with her head cut open. The other is Michael, run over by a tree harvester. Hello. Evelyn imagines herself sending a bullet right through James's throat, but then she sees the other visitor, Sarah Hill, a 15-year-old tomboy, James's granddaughter, stands at the doorway for a moment, hesitant to come in. Her eyes are red from crying, her knuckles are bruised. It's been a while. Has it? Evelyn pours a fresh glass of water and offers it to Sarah. No, thanks. Drink it. It should taste better than what we have in the house. Sarah Not tastes really. water. Sarah, my granddaughter. Yeah. Brad's kid, I remember. Evelyn can see Sarah's face beginning to turn red from her anger, but James is still wearing that proud smile Evelyn resents. He holds tightly onto Sarah's arm and has her walk into the dining room. Evelyn's glass of water is sitting on the table. James finishes the glass. Well, I like this water. He then goes ahead and pours himself some more. There's a hint of sweetness to it. Grandpa. You're not here to drink my water. I'm getting to my point. But first, I need to know my product works. I should have shot you at the door. Great. My product works. James continues to keep Sarah by his side. He struts about the room, touching things like a predatory animal claiming his territory. Where's your mother? Wouldn't you like to know? Do you know what's been happening in the world? There is a pandemic. People are dying. About 500 per minute. How does that make you feel? Aren't you the one that cooked up the virus? Your mother truly did a good job with you, Evelyn. James takes a seat on the sofa. Sarah stands guard beside him. Am I supposed to thank you? You should come with me, both you and your mother. We'll apply the technology that was used on you to the people who are infected by the virus and I'm prepared to agree to any conditions you may have. I'm prepared to do what I can. James pulls the phone out of his pocket. It's been buzzing for quite a while and it's killing his patience. Evelyn sees a worrisome look flash across James's face as he reads the message. People are dying, Evelyn. And at the moment, without what Aunt Ruth has accomplished with Project Otman, more people will die. Their brain turned rotten by the virus. We're talking about she people who shouldn't have to pay for the mistakes that my grandfather has made. I thought you came here because you wanted to kill me yourself. No, Sarah is a good kid. I speak from experience. I want to chop you into the smallest pieces I could manage. Mm. But that is not why I'm here. I'm here to ask you to do the right thing. Evelyn laughs. Why would she care about the right thing now? She is no longer human. Sarah is a fan, gives me quite a headache when I try to take her places. I'm sorry for all that's happened, 
my mom and I will do everything I can, but we're not coming with you. Why not? Because I can't trust him to do the right thing. Like I said, whatever you want. I'm prepared to agree to everything I can. That's new. I'm not the monster you imagine me to be. When Brad was trying to approach me, he told me his wife was sick. Is that true? No. Yes. Karma. Everyone sees Sarah, James, and Michael's eyes widen in disbelief, and those looks strike her deeply. Sarah pulls out a pistol and starts firing at Evelyn. Bang, 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 bang. Sarah isn't shooting to kill. She aims at Evelyn's leg. The sideboard girl needs to feel pain. Swoosh, an arrow flies across the room and cuts Sarah's hand. She loses the weapon. Ruth dashes out of her room, holding Evelyn's crossbow. James snaps out of shock. He gets up and brings Sarah behind him. Ruth, my friend, it's nice to see you again. Your daughter is bleeding. You need to take her to a doctor. Are you going to come with us? No. Sarah finds herself a hand towel in the kitchen. Then I'll manage. My daughter is sick. Ruth, I remember you two are friends. I'm not going to help anybody with your last name. Evelyn? That's not you, Ruth. Okay. Sarah presses forward to retrieve her pistol. Ruth charges at Sarah, pressing the arrow against her forehead before she can reach the gun. People change. Sarah isn't convinced that Ruth is capable of pulling the trigger. She keeps pressing forward. Ruth shifts the arrow to Sarah's open wound. Sarah forces herself to keep going. James steps up and pulls away. Maybe I've changed for the better. Evelyn remains on the ground, lying in a pool of blood. She sees Michael walking to her, standing over her body. I was under a lot of pressure, Ruth. I'm sorry to have chosen the drastic method, but I never would have done what I did if I didn't think you could pull it off. Everyone is a good guy in their own story. Her skull was left open when they sent me the body. I didn't know. <laughs> Lucky you. I can't change the past. Ruth sees the despair in James's eyes. That begins to make her feel better. Sad, isn't it? But there must be something I can do now, some way I can make it up to you. No, there isn't. What if she's broken? Evelyn pulls, pushes herself up. She groans in pain, clenching her hands tighter on the rifle. She imagines herself wearing a leash pole, the kind people use on dangerous animals. James is holding the other end. I've seen the videos of her fighting with my guys. And I have facilities, I have people, whatever you need to make her better. No, thank you. I can take care of my daughter. Grandpa, let's go. We're wasting our time. What if you never actually managed to save her? Evelyn tenses up, swoosh. Ruth shoots the arrow, it flies by James's neck. She can't be the only one who can help us. Sarah drags James to the door. James brushes Sarah off. Have you seen how she took care of my men? James pulls out his phone to show Ruth the footage of Evelyn killing Craig and Brad. Bang, Evelyn raises the rifle and fires a shot at James. It instantly kills him. Evelyn sees Ruth jumps in fright. She catches the quick moment of her mother looking at her as if she's a monster. Ruth resumes her tough poker face. That's what she does best. Evelyn drops the gun. You should have sent a big army of mercenaries in the first place. Sarah forces herself out of shock. She picks up James's phone and puts on the video of her Ruth. Here, this. Sarah then points to James's body on the floor. And this is what you've created. Mama. Ruth blocks herself between Evelyn and Sarah. She makes herself watch the videos. I'll still give you a choice. If you choose to come with me, I'll try to set up a fund to help anyone who needs the treatment but can't afford it. And I will give you our family lawyers to take care of everything that's happened here in the woods. But if you choose to decline, I upload these videos for everyone to see. And you know how people get nowadays. Who's going to save your mother then? I'm sure I can find someone to reverse engineer your scraps. Upload the videos. No, no, wait. Sarah presses the upload button. Nothing you can do about it now. 
Sarah leaves the cottage. Evelyn pushes herself up. She feels lightheaded. She needs to chase after Sarah. Ruth beats Evelyn to the door. She blocks it with her body. Evelyn doesn't want the confrontation. She finds herself a towel and ties it around her injury. How do you feel? Lightheaded? You've lost a lot of blood. Ruth takes Evelyn's hand and leads her daughter to her room. Sit down. And see. Ooh.